Hello everyone. Today we are going to see the type third problem. That type three also we can call statically indeterminate problem. So in this case, there is one bar. In between, we are applying the force. and both ends are fixed so why we call statically indeterminate because the normal equation of statics is not sufficient to solve such problems so for that we have to use some additional deformation characteristic equation that's why it is called statically indeterminate problems then how to solve such problems We'll see procedure. So the first thing is what when we draw the free body diagram. At that time, we have to assume forces acting on each body as P1 or P2, and that is again of tensile in nature. Since so, this is the first body that I had drawn, and on which I am showing the force P1 that is tensile in nature. Similarly. For the second body also, I will consider that P2 as a tensile. So this is the first condition. Now, here I have to develop one relation between these two forces because when I join the body one and the body two, at that time I will get resultant force towards right hand side. Now here, when I join these two, there are two forces. One is the P1. which is acting towards right hand side and another one is the p2 which is acting towards left hand side now when i join these two at that time the resultant is towards right hand side so it indicates that the p1 force should be greater so if i take this equation p1 minus p2 is equal to 150 right so from this i should consider that p1 should be greater if the force is towards left hand side then p2 should be greater at that time we might have taken p2 minus p1 but here the resultant is toward right hand side so therefore the right hand side force should be greater so p1 minus p2 you will get 150 kN so this is the one relation we develop so the two unknowns and one equation it is not possible to solve so another one condition we have to consider that is since both the ends that we are fixing so therefore the total change in length of this bar it remain as it is so that is change in length is zero so total change in length is zero so that is delta l that is change in length of the body first plus change in length of the body second it should be equal to zero now we will put we know the basic equation delta l is equal to pl upon a so P1 L1 upon A1 E1 of the first body plus similarly for this delta 2 P2 L2 divided by A2 E2. Now we know the length of the first body, cross-sectional area of the first body, then Young's modulus of the first body. Similarly, we know the length of the second body, area of the second body, and Young's modulus of the second body. Now, if we put all this value. then we will get the equation that is p1 is equal to something in terms of x p2 now if you see the equation 1 and equation 4 so p1 and p2 and again p1 and p2 so two equation we will get and the two unknown p1 and p2 from this equation 1 and 4 we can get the value if i put this equation number 4 in equation number 1 in this way then there is unknown only p2 from this i will get the value p2 and again i put the value of p2 in equation number 1 i will get value of p1 once i calculate the p1 and p2 separately then i can calculate the stress induced in the body 1 and stress induced in the body 2 now i assumed one thing that the force acting on body 1 and 2 are the tensile in nature at the end if i get the value p1 and p2 positive then 
I can say that assume directions are correct. Means in body one and body two, the forces acting are tensile. And if I get value P1 or P2 negative, that I have to indicate that the force acting on the body is compressive in nature. Initially we assume tensile, but at the end when I calculate, if I get negative, then that I have to consider it as a negative. So in this way we can calculate the forces and calculate the stresses corresponding to this that type three.